Okay, quickly to business this morning. Sorry for coming on a, a couple of minutes, more than a couple of minutes behind schedule. Uh, but our guest this morning is Dr. Tunji Abayomi, constitutional lawyer. Uh, he's uh, with us via our Abuja studio. A fine morning to you, Dr. Abayomi. In Nigerians. Okay. Oh, good All morning, right. Nigeria. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. So, well, um, here we are. Um, the Constitution was largely in play uh, yesterday as their lordships in the Supreme Court um, were reading the ruling to us. Uh, of course, we were leaning on it. There are a number of things that they, const they kept on referring to the Constitution. Um, well, there's a sense in which it depends on what side of the divide one was on. Uh, there are those who are going to say that none of this was surprising to them because, of course, uh, just like the lawyers of uh, the president, the positions that they had canvassed was indeed what was handed down. Um, w and were there any surprises at all uh, for you to ask an almost obvious question, Dr. Tunji Abayomi? <laughs> the only surprise was the, the length of the judgment. Okay, quite, uh, they were very thorough. Brief. <laughs> it was quite brief. And um, more interesting was also the decision not to uh, extensively review the petition or the appeal of the um, Labour Party and then um, Peter Obi. Indeed. Uh, essentially, as Indeed. the court said, mutantis, mutantis, or, you know, mutantis, so, so to say. That is generally, it's almost the same yes. as um, yeah. what was decided in the case of um, PDP. Otherwise, virtually everything was predicted in this station. You will recall, I had said that um, the Supreme Court was going to decide almost exactly as he decided. I think if you have a good knowledge of law, you could predict the decision of an objective and impartial uh, jurist. And that was what happened yesterday. Indeed. And um, the last ditch effort of uh, Waziri Adamawa Atiku Abubakar to uh, introduce evidence, that was clearly uh, pronounced upon that it had it was a waste of time quite frankly well you know this issue of evidence was uh, charged effectively at the tribunal i'm talking of the court of appeal yes. the court of first instance in presidential um, election cases you will recall that is that issue also has been decided, discussed extensively in your station. Election is largely at the polling unit. Whatever happens, the regularity or irregularity of election is decided by that at that polling unit. Now we are talking of a situation where parties have agents. These agents were present. And according to the Electoral Act, election is counted, announced, endorsed, not just by the officials and security agents, but also agents of parties. And this endorsement is inputted into a statutory form and given to agents and security officials. Now you now move out of that, you're complaining outside that environment. That's the position of the uh, Court of Appeals sitting as a tribunal, elect, as well as the Supreme Court. If you are going to invalidate election, you've got to show that at that polling unit, there are problems that make the election unsustainable. And this issue of election, I think it's important for us to understand it. 
to conduct election all over this country is a huge endeavor by any nation. And if you are now going to invalidate it, the law recognizes the huge or the hugeness of the endeavor. So it prescribes very strongly that to be able to invalidate that election is just beyond casualty. It's not just a question of just bringing a, a document that a man didn't have a certificate. A man who had 18 A's, 10 B's. I know how much I struggled in the university, in the three degrees I have in America, to have A. <laughs> and now you've got somebody who went to Chicago State University and got 18 A's. Now you're talking of 18 professors gave him A's. And now you bring a casual document to say that elections should be invalidated on the basis of that. I'm sorry. It's an exercise in futility like I predicted before. Mm. And here we need to salute the president for demonstrating leadership accommodation and tolerance. Because all the attacks, disrespectful designation, disrespectful disqualification, name calling, all of that. He never said anything, never responded. You can imagine. He was not even agitated. But what should agitate him? If you go to the university and you did well, came out on top, and somebody said, you didn't go to the university. I mean, it's, it's sufficient to provoke. It's highly provocative. But he maintained what Rudyard Kipling calls the common touch. And in this regard, we need to salute and commend him. Indeed. There were, the, the other point that was decisively uh, addressed was the whole, I don't know whether to call it a shenanigan or not, this whole matter about 25% uh, in the federal capital territory, uh, thereby converting the federal capital territory into a, a super state that, um, quite frankly, eminent lawyers commented upon before the handing down now uh, by their lordships that this is not an issue at all. All. And so it's now, uh, that time, all the, all the energy, all the intellectual energy that was dispensed uh, on that particular question, well, now it has firmly been pronounced upon and nobody is going to dare bring that up again, that if you don't win 25% in the federal capital territory, then you cannot uh, really be the president. So it was such a simplistic, highly simplistic and almost embarrassingly simplistic to use the words of Justice Okoro sounds like a friendly joke. Like it was said, so if a man wins in 30 states and he has the majority of the votes, he cannot become president of Nigeria if he does not win in federal country territory. Like I said, in your station here a while ago, I was a lawyer, one of the lawyers in Wazir Ibrahim against Shagari's case in 1983. This issue was already decided as at that time. Mm -hmm. In 1983, we had 19 states. And the same provision in this constitution was in that 1979 constitution that Abuja is to be treated like a state. Now we had at that time 19 states and federal capital territory. And in that Supreme Court in that case said, you become president if you win in 13 states. If you take uh, a quarter, the two thirds of all the states of 19 states, 
It's less than 13. I think it's 12 something. But if we take two thirds of 20, it will be 13.2. But because point 0.2 is less than 5, you go to the whole, and that is 13. So it was already clear. In this case, it's exactly the same thing. You need 25 states. And that means that Abuja, like Abuja was considered to be a state, in 1983, Waziri Ibrahim against Shagari is also a state. And like I said again, I mean, I couldn't understand senior lawyers talking about this. It's really, really embarrassing. Why were you focusing so much on federal capital territory? It was a nomenclature, the interest and the preoccupation of the Constitution is to account for the voters in the federal capital territory. The Supreme Court didn't go further into this issue intensely. The truth of the matter is that federal government has no voters. Only states and local government have voters. You calculate winnability by taking into consideration votes cast in states and local governments, not in federal territory as such. In order to account for the votes of federal territory, the ingenuity and brilliance of the makers of the Constitution said, okay, the only way we can account for that is to make federal capital territory a state in order to to account for the votes of the state. But it is a state that is not equal to other states. It's an unequal state. That's why it says it has to be treated like a state. Because it is an unequal state, the word and had to be used. And you cannot treat states unequally. So, the votes Voters in federal capital territory or this state, you may call it federal capital territory state, cannot be higher than the votes in my state. The voters, the value of the voters in federal capital territory state, quote unquote, cannot be higher than the value of the voters in my state, Undo state. And that's the point the Supreme Court was making. Yeah. The preoccupation. The nomenclature is a non sequitur. It means nothing at all. Mm -hmm. and, and that matter is settled. It is. It is now settled. So nobody is going to raise that uh, uh, kind of an issue again. As Justice Okoro uh, remarked uh, when he was um, reading the you know, uh, lead judgment, that if the framers of the Constitution had intended the interpretation give, being given some, by, by some sectors of uh, the law, um, it would have been very clear about that matter. It wouldn't have been what it was that gave rise to all of that, uh, all of that discussion and all of that uh, power, you know, intellectual power being expended on it. They would have been very, very clear that it was intended that without the 25% there, uh, the matters followed the way that that side of the uh, divide uh, was uh, proposing, but Justice Okoro sort of uh, sorted uh, that out. So now it will never come up again because people now know, both lawyers, both learned and non-learned uh, people. Um, uh, in the case of um, talking about the whole thing, uh, the case of LP and uh, Peter Gregory uh, Obi, they didn't spend too much time on that, as you have observed earlier, because the whole, there was nothing in it, uh, I think was the virtual conclusion. There was absolutely nothing in it that had not been covered by uh, Atiku's uh, uh, appeal. The principal issues are actually three, basically. The issue of qualification or disqualification, the issue of IRF, and the issue of federal capital territory. All those issues have been laid to rest in the uh, PDP appeal. And now the court needs not to waste its time. In reality, 
the appeal should not have gone to the court of appeal. And we should not have made, I'm sorry, embarrassing display in America as we did. Because these issues are simply not issues that are so difficult to understand for a sound legal mind. IRF was not in the Constitution, was also not in the Electoral Act, as I said in one of those interviews when, when you invited me. If it is just a directive, it is within the prerogative of INEC even to change it at the last minute, nothing will happen. If, for example, we gave an undertaking that it was going to use an IRF, and then it decided maybe two days before that we are no longer going to use an IRF, that's within the prerogative of its authority to conduct election and to decide the mode and the manner of conducting election. What INEC cannot do is to alter the prescription of law or the provision of the Constitution. We are now talking of a situation where what particularly the Labour Party spent so much energy, so much effervescence, so much noise over. Basically irrelevancy, I'm sorry to say. And the whole media, the whole social space of the nation is taken over by an issue that is largely immaterial to the process of ele election. As the court itself find, found it, so it's very telling um, that um, Justice Nyang Okoro, in reading, it is my view that there is no merit in this appeal, and it is hereby dismissed. I mean, that is clear to both learned and non-learned people. That, look, it's just that the Constitution does need to be satisfied. The constitutional right of all parties uh, need to be satisfied. And you gave credit at the very top to uh, uh, the president, who you know, was stoic about all of this, never said a word, never responded. Uh, in spite of, um, you know, all that was uh, thrown his way by way of disparagement, it, it did show, some would say, a kind of desperation uh, that you just couldn't uh, fathom. But at least they pursued all those who didn't see eye to eye with uh, INEX declaration of the president as the winner, uh, it, 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 they, 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 they were able, they were allowed, and they were able to exhaust all avenues, and they can't go any further. And so everybody now has to look uh, in a different direction, which must be the way of getting on with the job of governance now, uh, so that the president can, and his team can do their job with fewer distractions. Well, I think I had... Uh in circulation this morning, a video that uh, the former Vice President Atiku said if the Supreme Court decides against him, we will uh, appeal to God, which is okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> the ultimate judge. May God hear, judge. May, may God hear the prayers <laughs> of all Nigerians <laughs> for <a, laughs> For a better nation. That video had been in circulation I mean, for a while. It wasn't upon the occasion of, of this judgment. Uh, but, uh, you know, people uh, on social media found that it was, oh, this will fit into that particular uh, sort of scenario. But the Waziri Adamawa had made that statement even before when uh, reporters were asking speculative questions. That, look, if it comes to that, and if I don't get joy at the Supreme Court, uh, then I will appeal to God. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> I think it was, it was interesting. But the reality of the matter is that all over Africa, there is a need for a new thinking. The desperation, the frustration is totally unnecessary, in my view. We fight so much about election, 
we do so much to win, to, 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 to be there. It's only one man that will be there. One man in his time. And there are so many parts we can play in the development of our nation. I think we need to come to a new realization. Like I said, all of this is totally unnecessary. We condemn my neck. We condemn the nation. We condemn the courts. We do all of that simply because we want to. In other words, unless we are there, even if we are not entitled to be there, yeah. by law yeah. and by evidence, the nation will not have peace. I mean, I think we need to develop greater maturity. The political leaders of our nation. And I again want to salute the president of Nigeria for his maturity mm -hmm. throughout this time. And I'm talking of even before the election from, from February last year constant attack, innuendos, lies, all sorts of unwarranted vituperations, really? really? so to say. Yes. And yet, yes. he maintained the common touch without Indeed. responding. Co common touch? On the, and, um, on, the, on, the, on the race, on the high calling, so to say. Indeed. But the I think be we... Leadership needs to develop some maturity. A man will win. If you go into a competition, you either win or you lose. I have gone into political contests all the time, three times, or even four times. I ran for governor three times. I lost each time. I'm still happy. I'm still alive. I'm still functioning very well. I went for Senate once. I lost. Part, losing is part of life. And then we need, all we need to focus on in our country is that let the loser lose fairly. The winner wins justly. And when you are talking on winning justly, it's according to law. Losing fairly is also according to law. So we should respect the legal institutions like INEC. Can't spend yes. all our time condemning everything yes. in our country. They were condemning everything in sight. It, it was bordering on hatred, quite I frankly, let the truth be told. Uh, but then the, the, the statesmanship of the president, as you said earlier, was remarkable. In not responding to any of the verbiage, um, it's like, look, he was flicking it off you know, his shoulder, so to speak. That in itself is sort of a, something of a lesson uh, for people when they come into that kind of, if they ever have uh, the onerous uh, responsibility of being under such a barrage of uh, uh, malice, quite frankly, let it be said. But uh, good morning to you, Reverend Dominic. Good morning, Yori, if you can hear me. Good morning. Good morning. Dr. Go ahead, Reverend. Yeah, Chief Yori, just like Dr. Abbey, we have said this, we have said this several times on this station that the only election since 1983 that we can call a contest was the one of two... Not a word can we hear I in studio. Uh, Reverend Dominic, I, 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 I get the impression that Somebody you are speaking, but June we can't hear a thing. Like June no, June 12th election, there was no contest. It was like, a, like a, a superman with a small boy fighting. Can you hear me, sir? Can I go on? I can't hear you at all. Oh, okay, Reverend, uh, Reverend can, you, can you hear me? Little, can I go on? Uh, well, okay, go on. Uh, well, the network is fainting. Uh, okay, um, we're going to try and come back to you. There's a technical issue. It does sound as if your, 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 your level is even below one in terms of uh, one to ten on the scale. 
But, Mr. Uh, Monian, I, I said another IRF means malfunctioning. <laughs> <laughs> well, while we're trying to get Reverend uh, Dominic uh, his sound in order, uh, I, I don't know, between yesterday and today, uh, we're talking about the president being stoic about all that went through, and uh, now he was being congratulated yesterday. But I haven't heard yet that um, the you know parties involved have now haven't pursued it to the logical conclusion, have now extended their congratulations to the president. That is not quite sportsmanlike, is it? That's where it touches on hatred, precisely. Now. We are now talking of a situation where the president has offered olive branch after he was declared president to you. Where you decided to challenge the election, it's your constitutional right. Then you lost at the court of appeal, the court of first instance on election. Again, he extended olive branch to you. Then you went to the co Supreme Court. Again, yes. he has done all of that. In spite of the fact that some of the embarrassing things shouldn't have happened. You went to America, you brought some kind of deposition and asking the court to take it in order to establish that he committed fraud. Fraud for a certificate um, or certification um, indeed. over an outstanding scholar. Something that sounds silly. It, it, it was mind-boggling to some, Dr. Abai. I'm sorry to interject. It was mind-boggling to some, but at, at the end of the day, all of that was thrown out, and um, one is expecting that they would do the sportsmanly thing and uh, indeed extend their uh, heartfelt congratulations to the uh, clearly... A decided winner of the election. But, um, uh, Ms. Chidi in Kapanchan, good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Thank you very much for calling in. Uncle Yori, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. That's all right. Good morning, Dr. Abayomi. Good morning. I want to take this opportunity to, once again, congratulate the President, His Excellency, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, by the judgment delivered yesterday at the Supreme Court, the brickbat concerning the 2023 presidential elections has come to rest. Now, the duty that the president and his team has is governance and pure governance. As we will always say, Nigeria is having a good number of things that need to be fixed. And President Tinubu has shown the capacity to do the fixing that we need in the areas of security, in the areas of health care delivery, in the health care of education, and so on and so forth. Therefore, he has less issues to look up to, except how to mitigate over these challenges that the country is currently having. I wish the president well. I wish Nigerians across the entire strata well. I wish the future election well. Thank you very much, Uncle Yuri, and goodbye. Thank you very much, uh, Chidi in Kafanchan, uh, for if calling. I just, uh, if I may just add something, uh, Mr. Yori. You see, we, we spend much time focusing on the president. But I think we also have to extend our expectation for better governance of this nation to the legislative department and even to the judiciary. Governance under democracy is, is divided into three parts. The executive, the legislative, and the judiciary. Particularly our legislative department our people are getting uncomfortable with the tendency the well-being 
of the electors. Because we cannot have a situation where a citizen in this daily work, in a monthly salary, will be something like 30,000, and he will have to work for God alone knows hundreds of years to make an annual salary of a legislator. It is not possible. Indeed. One moment, doctor. We I can't have. Moment, doctor. Pardon, doctor. I got to bring in Yakubu. I'm sorry to interrupt you, uh, Doctor uh, Bayomi. Uh, uh, Yakub in uh, Dokwemu. Good morning to you, sir. Yeah, uh, uh, you good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, and then good morning to Doctor Bayomi. Uh, let me begin yeah, by saying uh, congratulations to Mr. President uh, Ashwad Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Yes. And then uh, by extension. So all 8 million people, 8 million plus people that are giving that food to him, and then by extension as well, to so those of people that are not giving that food to him, but by now, you were thinking that I die no applause giving my food to this man. Now, the Supreme Court has said he won the election, and uh, now, as he also rightly says yesterday, he said, say that now he's to work on. I, I want to say this. The session we have in now, uh, Mr. President need a prayer, which we have always did, we have always done every day, and then we'll continue to do that. And then I'm very sure he, he knows the session of this country as we have now, especially when it comes to inflation in terms of food and all that. Uh, and then I also want to use this opportunity to tell Mr. President to call National Assembly into order, Mr. Chief because the session that we found ourselves at this time does not warrant the National Assembly to go and buy car worth of 160 million. Okay. Because well, they were playing with our intelligence. All right, then. And thank you. I, I beg your pardon. I got to interrupt at this stage. But thank you very much for calling in. The main thing, I think, uh, as you said, was uh, congratulating the president and uh, his team and, indeed, all those 8 million-plus voters. Um, uh, Dr. Bayomi, we've just about uh, run out of time, but I think it does bear mentioning that um, we do expect uh, the contestants, the fellow contestants of the president, Alaji Waziri, um, uh, Alaji Atiku Abubakar, and Mr. Peter Gregory will be, uh, as sportsmen, uh, you know, to extend their congratulations to the president. If they don't, uh, one just begins to imagine what kind of a president might they have made uh, if those kind of values are not intact. That's the mark of leadership. To be strong when you lose and be weak when you win. Okay. Leadership <laughs> requires to be strong when you lose and to be weak when you win. I think that's a fine place. That philosophical place. It's a fine place to leave it, Dr. Bayami. I beg your pardon. We've completely run out of time. But I do thank you for your time this morning, Dr. Tunji Abayomi, constitutional lawyer. Well, thank you very much, and happy okay. day to Nigeria and Nigerians. Indeed. Happy day to Nigerians. The day after, you know, the Supreme Court, Court pronounced that Ashwaji Bola Ahmed Tinubu is indeed the rightful uh, president, according to the declaration of INEC and the 8 million voters that made that possible. Thank you very much. That was Dr. Tunji Abayomi. Now, we're switching... Um, we, I, should we go on a break? Because I've got another subject I wanted to quickly touch on. I, um, okay, stay with us. We'll come back and we'll look at, um, we'll look at the governorship, uh, as you know, in uh, Bielsa, among uh, the out-of-cycle election that's coming up. And we'll be, in particular, we'll be looking into the PDP uh, governorship uh, can candidate. Uh, as you know, Einek uh, had put out a list. This, that a list uh, has been reacted to. Uh, all of that when we come back. Stay with us, please. Every major news story is with many perspectives and layered with different levels of impact. Hello. What time did this happen? We will be right there. At TV's News, we follow the big and major news, gathering the facts, witnessing the outcome. I am 
here live at the aftermath of the approval of the new national minimum wage. We are TV station of the year, not just for breaking news, but for being first, fair and accurate. TVC News, first with breaking news. Okay, welcome back uh, very quickly. My guest this time is uh, uh, Chief Everada Don Abednego. Uh, he's spokesperson of the uh, PDP Governorship Campaign Council. And um, uh, he's, he's the right guest because we, we want to look at um, the situation uh, in, let me say, in Bielsa State. Let's take Bielsa State, where Timmy Prey Silva, you know, uh, as a candidate of the PDP, has been advised to step down and then INEC put out a put out its list and you know where, where uh, the name would have been INEC had said court order so the name was left blank so uh, you're a fine person to ask uh, so where, where where exactly are we in 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 terms of the PDP candidature for that election uh, well first thanks for having me and good morning to you. pleasure um, I think in Bias State and in particular the People's Democratic Party's uh, campaign council we are not really perturbed about what's the outcome of that uh, uh, judgment is reason being that uh, we already know mm. what stands before us and the future the prosperity of our people mm -hmm. already the election has been decided in the minds of the people okay uh, governor deidere has become you know his followership is like a cold stuff everywhere he goes people want to mob him the reason being that we've never had it so good and so when we had that uh, the one we really wanted to end officially mm -hmm wanted to end him officially so that this issue of him wanted the other man, I don't want to mention his name, the APC candidate, wanted to come for governor again. Come on. By sense of wanting a man that has been roundly rejected. We were trying to be very modest in our use of language, but I tell you, when the story came that uh, the court has asked him to go the other way, that he's not competent to contest the election. Uh, well, well, not qualified. Not qualified. I'm using words that are having a fine romance. Uh, for us, as Not people, qualified because... Yes, not the, qualified. The reason being that yes. if he was allowed, and, you know, he would have spent more than he's constitutionally allowed. Yes, yeah, so he even tells the story that uh, even a man who hasn't the knowledge of the law will understand that. No one will be allowed to become a governor in this country for nine years, and so that is over. But for us... It worries us. By essence, are prepared to make a clean sweep, end his reign politically. Now you'll be telling people after the election that uh, if I had been given the opportunity, I would have surprised by a surprise how. And that's why we're saying we're not going to spend our time dealing with the issue of the disqualification of the DPC candidate because in the eyes of By essence and all well-meaning people of good conscience, we don't believe he has anything to stand against the Nigeria. But we're interested about what is happening in the state. Our campaigns have been fantastic. We started so early, and we are not doing campaigns in Enegua. We are going community after community. Okay. And what shocks most folks, and for your station to please, let's, let the reportage be every day, so that you see what's happening, even as I'm speaking now. Mm -hmm. Serious activities are taking place everywhere. The governor is going community after community, constituency after community, uh, constituency. and what is he doing? Going to commission projects. Can you imagine okay. that? And you know what? He's not just commissioning projects, projects that are capable of turning around the forces of the state. Remember, the mantra of our government is prosperity. And so the question is, is this governor taking prosperity to the people? The answer is yes. In what area? In health, in education, in security. And no, let me say this. Bias State today stands the most peaceful state in this country, including Lagos. And because we're saying, if there is any dissenting voice to this position, it is not from the Bias State government. It's not from the campaign council. Security assessors all over the country, police, DSS, the armed forces, they are saying if there is one state that Nigerians should beat their chest and tell the world, come to Nigeria and find peace. In Bias State, you have that. The question is, how have we been able to do this? It's about the investment this government has made. It's about the demonstration of political will. He does not compromise anything that has to do with governance and insecurity. But most importantly, he has been able to weave an uncommon bond and building bridges of trust between the people, security agencies. Why not? The people are saying their lives, the sanctity of their life, their existence, their property should also be their responsibility to do. But now that we have government, all of us agree that there should be a government in this country, and therefore we gave it to government constitutionally, but if we allow judges and security agencies to do it, no way. We can't be safer. And so we choose to hold our hands together with all security agencies and say, 
can we do it together? It's so working. Now we're telling people too, for those who are listening from afar, mm -hmm. if there is a state that security officers want to walk in, is by a state. Because I, I was talking to a very senior police officer like a couple of days ago, and he said sometimes in their station, from morning to night, no incident of crime reporting. <laughs> it's fantastic. It is. But then, it is. is it enough? No. And that's why we're saying we have to sustain it, continue it. And that's why the reelection of Governor Deidre isn't just good for Bayesans. It's a good thing for Nigeria. But we must have to say, anytime we get it right in Bayesan State, it encourages the growth of the kingdom of this country. No. Oh. Bayesan State is the homeland of all the jobs. So and remember what it contributes to the national economy. If we get things wrong mm. in terms of security, mm -hmm. don't ask me. It's going to affect every other state in this country. And of course, that's not what we wish. Okay, let me take on Mazi Okora for good morning to you from Aro Chuku. Uh, what, uh, good morning. Well, we thank God for today being Friday. I've been the last Friday of the, in the month of October. Please, the verdict has been made. At least the Constitution has spoken. Now, the question is this. The Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria has said it on that. What I should expect Nigeria is that, one, all the participants in the game, everybody, congratulations to our president. And congratulations to those contestants, too. Mazi Okorafo, we are on the Bayelsa, ahead Bayelsa governorship election. Hello? I think he might be watching us from... Hello? Somewhere. Hello, Mazi. Uh, uh, we, we have come away from that subject. We are now looking at ahead of Bayelsa governor, governorship election. Okay, Bayasa. Okay, yes, Bayasa. and uh, our guest in yes. studio is yes. Everada Don Abednego, spokesperson of the PDP Governorship Campaign Council. Yes, now the Bayasa coming by on the 11th of next month. Yes. My own concern about Bayasa is that they should try as much as possible that those people in the river line area, they should try as much as possible for so their own vote to count. There shouldn't be any vote, voters apathy for those in the riverland area. Most of the time, we normally have that that the vote did not get to them, they got there late, and also be delayed the announcement of the result. And the authority concern, I'm just begging the youth, those who that knows how to swim, because what our boys used to do that time was very small, that was around in the early 70s. When we go to swim, they will make us to, 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 to drink the water because we don't know how to swim. They should try to do now to see at least help people. All these uh, companies around that place with this uh, uh, jacket. All so right. People who are doing the job, they should also be protected when they are going to, going to the sea because this is dry season and the sea waves is always very high. To provide security for them is very, very important. Okay. We wish them, all of them, that free and fair election, whether mm -hmm. PDP or APC or Labour or NET or SDP. But Whatever. the question is, our vote in the Riverland area okay. must count. No. Very, very good. You, if you had heard, you know, we were just hearing from uh, uh, Mr. Bednigo that um, security, peace, and tranquility is one of the highlights, uh, according to him. Uh, but there he is speaking about, look, the youth, uh, well, he spoke about the matter of apathy, but also the youth need to be prevailed upon. Uh, how do you react to that? Yeah, uh, first, uh, uh, we have what we always tell people that uh, our bragging right as a government in bias state is security. Uh, because we've never had it so good. And that's why we're saying one of the determining factors for the outcome of November election uh, is, is not my who contest against the injury. Mm -hmm. It's security. Remember, it is all over. It's a generally accepted concept that uh, whenever you get it right in security, these substructures of society will just key in. And that's why, since we've got it right in security and we're improving on it, if you go to health, we're asking, what is the investment that we've been able to make in health? And I tell you, cottage hospitals, mm -hmm. health centers, okay. community. Come on. So those are the things that are going to really uh, Yeah, weigh so in. we are operating on the basis of records. Records of building critical infrastructure like roads. Remember, Baeza State is so riverine. But there are places, local governments in Baeza State, that they've never seen a car before. The governor came and said, I'm going to take the world to you people. That was part of the covenant he has with the people. Mm. The question is... Three years down the drain going to fall. What is the situation? People okay. are driving to their homes. And so people are saying, for this road, yes. for these bridges, yes. for daring the terrain to tell the world that, yes, 
Biosystem system can be developed irrespective of whatever challenge. We are coasting so easy and so happy. Okay, let me bring in Ada. Uh, Ada in Joss, good morning to you. Morning. We're looking at our head, our head the uh, Bayelsa yes, governorship sir, election. Good Ada, good morning to you. Um, Ada, I'm no, calling from Joss, as you um, I'm very happy with what is happening in Bayelsa State. Bayelsa, in, 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 in fairness to them, they are very calm people. Very unassuming, easy going set of people, you know, despite all the pollution there. So, but uh, uh, pockets of uh, violence that used to happen there, they are usually politically motivated and it, it has to stop. Well, but, I mean, uh, politics is not a do or die effect. And then uh, I was watching, when I was watching some of one of the programs, I think uh, one of the elder state persons there said that uh, there is qualification of the other candidates. That it was an answered prayer for him that he once told them that he will not contest again. So they are even surprised how he went into the race again, you know. So sometimes politicians, when they say they speak with both sides of the mouth, they will say they are not contesting again this and that. Then they will follow the answer. And say, the way they are removed, they will, they will see it as answered prayer. They just have to see it as answered prayer and, and work with the person who is the winner and then, uh, you know, move the uh, relation forward. I, I don't know, but I don't know the way they are. Uh, the three, the three states that are going to do this off-season election, they are all uh, prone to violence, you know, for electoral violence. So that shouldn't be. All right, let's not on Nigeria. I don't mind. All right, then. Thank you very much for calling in, uh, Ada. Um, okay, but you see, I, I've got to go back to the matter of um, the protest that reportedly has been made by uh, Timmy Presilva to uh, INEC uh, that... They should withdraw this list of where they are leaving the place blank. Uh, <laughs> they should withdraw that list where his name is blank. <laughs> but you, you said it. Um, you, you're not going to be concerned with that. Uh, whatever, for the sake of uh, constitutionality, uh, mm -hmm. for those of us who are friends of the law, mm. uh, when the law states, you know, A, then everybody should lean towards that. Of course, it does has a right uh, to to go and uh, approach the AP court or whatever level. But the thing is, as, as low as this, you don't need to be a professor to understand that this is a completed matter. Yes. What INEC is doing is not helping PDP. They are not helping APC. They are upholding the principles they, of law as they themselves as enshrined in the establishment of that institution. As they themselves And stated. so if he's asking INEC, go, please don't ask INEC. He likes to cut corners. Okay. Look. The other candidate likes to cut corner. Look, our own governor is a governor of a process. Okay. He's a governor that believes in adherence of principles and procedures. So we're and that's why any time he says a thing, he follows. He has been delisted for now. Mm -hmm. We are not saying he shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. For us, we are begging as a government okay. and as a campaign council. Please, can the laws look any way they can to bring him back? But, oh, would it be possible? Nine years? But when we keep saying nine, nine years, we're talking as if there is a possibility for him to emerge as a governor. Which, How? Which you are From where? You are Even in his hometown of Poma, okay. he's going to be so rejected and decimated so politically. So Doe Ediri is the man? Doe Ediri isn't just the man. Doe Ediri, has, the followership of Doe Ediri has become a court movement okay. in Bias State. So, and that's why we're saying, if you're from Brass Axis, where I come from, the Bias East Central District, mm -hmm. remember, Nembe and Brass are far down the Atlantic as we speak today. Folks who drive their cars, including him, a few years back, he was a governor for four years old, about five years. And then when he was approached by the people to construct a road from Yenegua to his hometown, do you know what he told by essence? He said, taking a road to his hometown is economically unviable. And today, he drives that. It's a shame. But we're saying the governor didn't stop there. This governor made that possible, and the governor has gone further to say, look, there is a rich place that is endowed with natural resources. The wealth of this world is under the Atlantic. But then, that is where Brass is. What do we do? In the course of his electioneering campaign in 2019, he told the people, when I become a governor, I will take the world to you. What is he doing today as we speak? So, a road is moving from Nembe down the Atlantic to Brass. So the, and he knows the people of Brass have told this other one. It's their own son, because he's from there. They've told him, we love Diri as a friend more than you, our blood, because he loves us. He's making the world understand that our lives matter. Okay, we're going to have to leave it there. With the, 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 the vigor with which you've presented this uh, position is to say that uh, as far as um, BIOS is concerned, we're ready. You're just ready, waiting for, you know, the election. It's, it's game over. Ours is not going to be about an election on November 19. It's an affirmation. That's why anywhere we go, okay. we tell the people, please continue to build the platforms. 
November 11, sorry, November 11, just continue to build the platforms for celebration because <laughs> on February 14th, isn't just going to be a Valentine's Day. It's going to be another moment for us to understand the essence of love Let's and prosperity. Let's when leave the is going to be inaugurated for the second time to the glory of God in God we trust. We've completely run out of time, but thank you very much for coming on. Uh, that's, uh, uh, well, I like to say Chief, Chief Everada Don Abednego, you know, sp spokesperson of the PDP Governorship Campaign Council. Thank you very much. My profound respect. Indeed. So these are, thank you very much. Uh, so that's, that's where we're going to have to leave it. Um, next program is on Monday. Please join us then for a fresh edition. I am Yori Folani. Do have a great weekend. I'm here to rule forever, and nothing can stop me. That woman is wicked. <laughs> I love you all. Get lost, ratchet, poor thing. She must be my parent. I don't my the money, power, respect I have, I did it by doing everything. That low budget Beyonce. The following is a paid presentation by ShopX TV. Do you struggle with having an active and healthy lifestyle due to your busy schedule? Do you find it difficult to make it to the gym? You want to improve your overall health, but don't know where and how to start? Medical experts agree that walking, running and jogging are amongst the best ways to stay fit and enjoy a great active and healthy lifestyle. What if there was a convenient and affordable way to improve your health, improve your mood and lose weight right in your own home? Introducing the SportX Digital Compact Treadmill, the compact foldable treadmill that makes being active and losing weight fast and easy. Just unfold it and walk, jog or run while you watch your favorite programs on TV. And when you're done, just fold it and store it away. Now that's convenience. The secret is its advanced design that houses a one horsepower motor that is twice the size of most treadmills. Packed into a nice compact unit, powering every step you take. You get the SportX Digital Compact Treadmill System complete with a rugged commercial grade ultra durable traction belt, large LCD multifunctional display that displays speed, time, distance, calories and has 12 different exercise programs as well as a magnetic safety key for added security. The SportX Treadmill has really helped me get back in shape after childbirth. I love it because it's compact and can fit anywhere in the house. And when I'm done, I fold and put it away. Easy peasy. This is the best piece of equipment for people like me who want to stay active without leaving the home. I simply unfold it and use it while I watch my favorite program on TV. Joining the gym can cost an absolute fortune and you could be paying up to 600,000 Naira in annual gym fees. Get the Sport X treadmill to save the cost and work out from the convenience of your home. You could pay 500,000 Naira for a treadmill like this, but you can get the Sport X treadmill for not 400,000 Naira, not even 300,000 Naira. Order right now and get this for just 294,500 Naira only. But wait, there's more. If you order now, you get the Sport X Digital Compact Treadmill delivered to you for free, wherever you are in Nigeria. The Sport X Compact Digital Treadmill comes with ShopX 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied with the treadmill, send it back for a full refund. But hurry, limited stock available. So, Call the number on your screen now or visit our website to place your order while stock lasts. The proceeding was a paid presentation brought to you by ShopX TV. There is always more to a story than the screaming line. The part of a story that is not told casts a shadow. It's like the part of an object that is not reached by light. On TVC News, I'm able to explore the many angles there are to a story, talking to stakeholders, asking the difficult questions, and digging for facts. I believe the viewers are able to make a better decision if they're well informed and understand not just a part, but the complete story. 
TVC News, first with breaking news. At TVC News, wherever the big news story is happening, we are geared up to break it. TVC News, first with breaking news. Yeah, thanks for joining us on TVC Media News. Let's begin with the reactions on the Supreme Court's judgments affirming the victory of President Bola Tinubu, Minister of Interior Olubumi Tunjojo, has congratulated President Bola Tinubu and the Vice President, uh, Senator Kashim Shetima, over the Supreme Court verdict. In a statement signed by Alao Babatunde, the Special Advisor on Media and Publicity to the Minister, applauded the verdict of the President's Petitions Tribunal. The Apex Court, in its ruling, dismissed the appeals by the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abubakar, and his Labour Party counterpart, Peter Obi. Meanwhile, the governorship candidate of the Social Democratic Party, Motala Ajaka, congratulates President Bola Tinubu on his victory at the Supreme Court. Mr. Ajaka said President Bola Tinubu's victory is a reflection of the will of the people in the February the 25th, 2023 presidential election. Motala Yakubu Ajaka also appealed to President Bola Tinubu to ensure that the will of the people of Kogi State is allowed to reflect in the November 11th governorship election in Kogi State. Now, a member of the ECOWAS Parliament says the verdict of the Supreme Court on the presidential election will strengthen democracy, not just in Nigeria, but in the West African region. Moyo Thomas has more. Since the declaration of President Bola Tinubu as the winner of the 2023 general elections, the international community and foreign organizations have always shown their weight behind his administration, even while opposition were challenging the outcome. The opposition continued even after presidential election petitions tribunal affirmed the election of President Tinubu on the 7th of September. Now, the final verdict of the Supreme Court has laid to rest all issues on the presidential election debate. A member of the ECOWAS Parliament believes the result is positive for Nigeria. One at the appeal court has won at the Supreme Court. It will make the international community to look positively at Nigeria. You know, we face a lot of economic problems uh, with, with, with regard to the dollar, etc., etc. Now, I can see the price of the dollar stabilizing going forward. Apart from that, too, a lot of companies that were thinking, sitting on edge, whether to come to Nigeria or not, most of them will come because they know this is a country you can trust. If you put your body here, the law courts, if you have any problem, you can go to the law court, they can adjudicate, and everybody will accept. Nigerian youth and other civil society organizations in support of the Bola Ahmed Tinobu's presidency were seen at the 3M zone celebrating the verdict of Supreme Court. The judiciary has done an exceptional job by delivering the most sound judgment ever in the history of election petition in Nigeria by strengthening critical issues of legal dichotomy, democracy, 